All right, this is number two on the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, dealing with the subject the virgins rejected for not having the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was uh, young, sitting in church, hearing the preacher preach on that, and I, it just didn't satisfy me. I mean, when I heard it preached, it looked to me like half of the Christians are not going to make it into heaven. They're going to show up at the gate, and they're going to say, here we are, and he's going to say, nope. You don't have the Holy Spirit. So go and sell something and buy the Holy Spirit. If you did that, you'd make it in, but you didn't. So you're cast into outer darkness. I thought, man, that sounded like the Pentecostals are right. So it never did satisfy me. It wasn't until I got grown and started studying the Bible and looking at the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven that I came to understand the truth of the matter. So we're going to show you that from the scriptures right now. The kingdom of heaven is like unto five wise and five foolish virgins. We're going to let the Bible interpret itself. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins. It didn't say the kingdom of God would be like ten virgins. It said the kingdom of heaven. This book extensively explains the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven by dealing with every verse in the Bible where the word kingdom is used. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now it was assumed that the oil was the Holy Spirit. Uh, if that's the case, then there's going to come some point in the future uh, at that time then when the people who have the Holy Spirit and those who don't will be judged based on that. Some will be let in, some won't. But it says they're virgins. In other words, they're not sinners. They're not reprobates. They're virgins. And we understand a virgin to be a, a lovely, wonderful, beautiful, holy thing. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Now midnight, we know in the Bible, that's a term for the end of the age when Christ comes back. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now that's strange. How do you trim the Holy Spirit? Uh, how do you tune up the Holy Spirit? Well, anyway... And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. Uh-oh. Now you've got half of the people with oil and half of them without it. And the half without the oil, supposedly the Holy Spirit, are asking the others to give them some. They didn't go to God to get it. They're wanting to go to the others who have it. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. <laughs> Oh, it gets stranger all the time, doesn't it? But go ye rather to them that sell and buy oil for yourself. Wow. Who sells the Holy Spirit? Where do you go to buy? And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. Now, it's understood that this marriage is the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage of Christ to the church, and the door was shut. And afterward, after the door is shut, after the rapture, we suppose, came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore. So this is the, based on this parable, he exhorts those who are hearing it. Watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, what this implies is that you need to be attentive and kept, keep yourself ready for the coming of the bridegroom because when he comes, half will be let in and half will be rejected because some had oil, others went away to buy oil, and when they got there, it was all over with and they were shut out. Now, you know, there's just, there's no application 
in the kingdom of God for that parable. It just doesn't make any kind of a sense at all. So the question then, we made the assumption in times past that the virgins are the church. But who are the virgins? Notice that these virgins are not the bride. They are coming to view the bride and assist with the bride. So it's not the bride marrying the bridegroom. That's not who they are. Their attendants, Psalm 45, 13, the king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. The virgins are aids, bridesmaids, if you would have it, for the bride. And so the wedding takes place with the bride and the bridegroom, but the bride's maids, the virgins, don't get to enter in. Now, here's the key to understanding this. Of course, if you understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, you breeze right through this and it's very clear. Then, that's where this passage starts. That's a time. At that time, then at that time, shall the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of God, be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom. So the question is, when is then? And as he sat upon the mount of all his disciples, came unto him privately, tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So let me know when the then is. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains, let him which is on the housetop not come down, and so forth. So the then is at the time of the great tribulation and the second coming of Christ. Revelation 19, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready, different from the virgins. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. So that's different from the bridegroom and the bride, a different group, a group of attendees. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he says to me, these are the true sayings of God. So we don't have the time, but chronologically, after the rapture of the church, when the bride is taken up to heaven, there's the judgment seat of Christ. And then there's the marriage of Christ to the bride. Now that marriage of Christ to the bride takes place either at the end of the tribulation or the very beginning of the millennium. And there will be guests coming from all over the world to attend that marriage. Some will be let in, some will be rejected. Because during the tribulation there will be survivors. There will be people who will believe God, who never heard before, and they will be saved at the end of the tribulation or when they're killed. What I have here is a page out of this book, Eight Kingdoms. You see the characteristics of the kingdoms, kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven. Now, I've done this with all the passages. You'll notice the X means that statement is found only in the kingdom of heaven. And here are the references. And as you go down through it, you see the list continues comparing the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Now, there are, there are references to the bride and the marriage for the kingdom of God, but they're different from the kingdom of heaven. And when you compare the two texts, you see the contrast. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are not the same thing. God is creator. The heavens were created. God is eternal. The heavens are temporal. God is omnipresent. The heavens are a place in time. The kingdom of heaven is a physical, visible place of time and kingdom. The kingdom of God is spirit and truth. The kingdom of God is the dominion of God over all creation. No one location or dispensation. The kingdom of God is unassailable, incorruptible, indissolvable, has no earthly prelate. It's not an institution. It's power and glory, righteousness, peace and joy. It's within you. It's spiritual. It's righteousness in nature. 
It's flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is created in time and space. It's physical, it's vulnerable, nothing religious or spiritual about it. Ideally, it's the rule of heaven in the heavens. It can be the rule by anyone or anything at any time. It will come as an institution. It will be subjected to the kingdom of God. It will be a kingdom of righteousness. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven compared. So as you see, we have whole pages, page after page, comparing the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, showing the parallel passages over and over again. In fact, we look at it several different ways. I think five or six different ways. Here is parallel passages in all the Gospels, the book of Acts, and New Testament. So when you're reading your Bible and you come across a passage that says kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven, you can locate it in here and read the parallel passages and an explanation for it. So I would suggest you get that if you're a serious student. Now, that's not light reading. <clears throat> it took me 30 years to write this, and I worked on it extensively. Uh, hour after hour, day after day, I worked on that, going through it. So I get that, and then my latest book, uh, Make a Great Little uh, Christmas Present. It's full of, I got about 45 or 50 full-color paintings that my uh, granddaughter prepared, and it is called Faith More Than You Think. This is going to freak you out, okay? It's going to wake you up to some truths you've been missing. So those two are available to you. And I'm going to go work on my my uh, jet boat. I'm building an aluminum jet boat. And I'm going to go down in the shop and do a little aluminum welding.